Miusha, Ornina, Aval, Augustirval, Ogli Naheran, our son and general Ithagach Agyanis, and Dara of God, Kurum Falchero of Kaler and you, our Okad and Sharmanish, Quivnakan, Blintul, and General Michal Okulon. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, members and veterans of Ogli Naheran, on behalf of the General Officer Commanding 2 Brigade, I wish to welcome you all today on the occasion of the annual commemoration of General Michael Collins. Shortly, Rear Admiral Mark Mellet, Deputy Chief of Staff of the Defence Forces, and Mr. Michael Collins Powell, representing the family of General Michael Collins, will arrive on parade and the commemoration will begin. After speeches by GOC 2 Brigade, the Deputy Chief of Staff and Mrs. Mary Claire O'Malley, and a prayer recited by the garrison chaplain, a short military memorial ceremony will take place. Thereafter, you are invited to view an archival display in the dining complex, including a number of documents, photographs, and images from the Bureau of Military History, the Collins Papers, and the private collection of the Collins Powell family concerning General Collins and his time in the Irish Volunteers and Doyle Erin. At this time, out of respect for the dignity of the occasion, I would ask you to switch your mobile phones off. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Chief of Staff, Rear Admiral Mark Mellet, accompanied by Mr. Michael Collins Powell, Grand Nephew of General Michael Collins, arriving on parade. You are invited to stand. Chief of Staff Designate, Rear Admiral Mellet, Officer Commanding Colbro Barracks, Lieutenant Colonel McGuinness, members of the Collins family, veterans of Oli de Heron, guests, officers, NCOs, and soldiers of Colbro Barracks. Mar Gilera Alfie Gucci Gellis, and Donna Brigade, the White Home Fata Akir Riv Gilair, and Chauvin Yu, King Our Comorid, the Gilera Mihal of Pilon. Er on thrur, he knew his doka, Lena de Voss. As General Officer commanding the 2nd Brigade, I would like to welcome you all here to Cahogro Barracks today for our General Michael Collins commemoration on this 93rd anniversary of his death. We are, we are honoured to have in our presence for this occasion Mary Claire O'Malley, General Collins' grandniece and daughter of former Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Collins Powell. It is a privilege and honor to welcome you. Additionally, we have many other members of the Collins family to join us for this commemoration. It could be considered somewhat ironic holding our commemoration for General Collins in a barracks named for Cahal Brua, but it is entirely appropriate given this barracks has a strong connection with General Collins himself and is also the headquarter barracks of 2nd Brigade Obling Nehern. I'd like to reflect just for a moment on the life of General Collins. By August 1922, he had demonstrated inspirational leadership and organizational ability through his service in a variety of appointments throughout the revolutionary period. Collins was present in the GPO in Easter 1916 as Joseph Plunkett's aide de camp. He was a key leader in the rejuvenation of the revolutionary movement in Frongok internment camp. And thereafter he served as Minister for Finance in the First Dáil, later as Director of Intelligence, and a member of the Irish delegation to London that negotiated the Anglo-Irish Treaty of December 1921. Following the outbreak of the Civil War, Michael Collins was appointed as Commander-in-Chief of the National Army in July 1922, with full general rank. At that time, the Army General Headquarters was located here where you are today, in what was then termed or called Portobello Barracks. Reminders of General Collins' short time spent here are all around us. His office was located in the Brigade Training Centre, just here on our left. His, he was accommodated, or his home was in the Red House, just to your rear, and is now the home for the Defence Forces School of Music. And a number of striking photographs show him in full uniform in various locations throughout the barracks. All of this in his short life before departing from this location for that tragic rendezvous at Bail de Blois in West Cork on this day, 93 years ago. In advance of the year of commemoration, significant progress has been made here in Cahal Brua Barracks to capture key aspects of our military heritage, particularly in relation to the revolutionary period and, of course, General Michael Collins. Defence Force Military Archives, uh, a new location is under construction again just behind you, have been central to this process. And I want to publicly thank Colonel Pori Kennedy and his team 
for their dedication in ensuring key aspects of our heritage are preserved. The garrison officers, NCOs and soldiers of this barracks have put in a lot of work to preserve this heritage. And in particular, Colonels John Joe O'Reilly and Colonel Brian Reid. But also another incredibly important individual, Private Noel MacDonald, or Noel the Barber. He has made a very special effort to reach back across 93 years and make this special connection to Michael Collins, the Michael Collins that lived and worked in these very buildings. It is the initiative and drive that Noel displayed as president of the private's mess with the support of Cahill Brewer personnel, which achieved the construction of the Collins Memorial here at the very location where the iconic poster photo of the big fella was taken on his return coming from mass in the chapel to his accommodation. Noel is now working on a historical tour of the barracks and thank you for your enthusiasm and work to make this day a reality. So I think a special round of applause for Private Noel McDonald. This large barracks, almost 43 acres in size, is home to the 2nd Brigade headquarters and is a garrison of over a thousand in personnel, men and women of Ovi Kaheri. Today, however, we are delighted to receive the return of many former members of Old League and Heron, our veterans, to share in this commemoration. They are and will always remain very much part of our defence community. Training for operations and maintaining our capabilities, both at home and overseas, is our core activity here in the 2nd Brigade. And today, the unit serving on the Golan Heights in Syria is drawn from the 2nd Brigade and the 7th Battalion located here in the barracks will soon stand up a unit for Lebanon under the current barrack commander, Lieutenant Colonel McGuinness. I believe that as we gather here today that Michael Collins would be very proud of such service in the cause of peace in many parts of the world. There is an equipment display on the main square, so please take time to visit the various stands, chat with the, with the soldiers, and in the case of our veterans, renew some old friendships. Take time to take in the visitor centre, which has important artefacts related to the revolutionary period, and to Michael Collins himself. And of course, our Rolls Royce armoured car, Sleeve Le Mans, which was part of the convoy at Bail de Blanc on that fateful day. Music today has been provided by the Defence Force Number no. 1 Army Band, and of course, we have also arranged the pipes and drums of the 2nd Brigade Band. They will be on the main square with the equipment display, so please enjoy their presence when you go to visit. Uh, I'd like to make a special note of thanks to the ceremonial parties today provided by the 2nd Cavalry Squadron and the 7th Battalion. And a particular mention for an important group of people, and you can see their, the benefits of their work in front of you, but the Barrack Environmental Team, who have worked to have everything in great shape today. So I think a very special round of applause for them. Finally, we are delighted that you are all joining us here today on this, the 93rd anniversary of the death of our first Commander-in-Chief in the present presence of our new Commander-in-Chief, Admiral Mellet. Shinawil Gurev Mahal. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Chief of Staff, Rear Admiral Mark Mellet, will now make a press. <coughs> Gentlemen.
General Officer Commanding Two Eastern Brigade, General Michael Berry, members of the Collins family, uh, men and women of Oak Nahirn, veterans of Oak Nahirn, distinguished guests. It's actually a privilege to be asked to come here today and remember General Michael Collins on the 93rd anniversary of his death. By any measure, his legacy is extraordinary. He was an extraordinary man who lived in an extraordinary time. I sometimes think we can become obsessed with our sense of complexity today as we look at the saturation of data and information, the explosion of technology, the complexity of the threats we face with the instability in Ukraine, the axis of evil that is ISIL from the Middle East into Africa, and the overwhelming migration issue centered on the Mediterranean. But 100 years ago, Michael Collins lived in a very complex world. At 15 years, he went to London and worked in the center of gravity of economic power for the world at that time. He lived in a time in which the Russian Revolution was in full swing, and he went on to see the Second World, the First World War commence and his own War of Independence and the Civil War following on. It was also a time in which technology began to take off and we see the man here beside us. But he was also an extraordinary man as an individual himself. Today, in the postmodern Mocha Satyal say that the modern leader, military leader, must not just be a warrior, but he must also be a diplomat and he must be a scholar. And we look back at Michael Collins, and of course, he was a warrior. But he was a diplomat who negotiated freedom for the state. And he was a scholar who studied in King's College, in economics, in accountancy, and in tax. But I think the most important piece that I'd like to say here is the legacy of Michael Collins. The principles that he espoused, courage, physical and moral, respect, integrity, loyalty, and selflessness are the same very principles that define the institution of holding the hearing today. There's no doubt that Michael Collins demonstrated physical courage. His moral courage was demonstrated by the fact that he didn't sit on the fence. He was willing to take a position. His respect, in terms of his love of his family, and his friends is without question. His integrity, his consistent application of principles is clear. His loyalty is without question in the national interest and to Ireland. And his selflessness is reflected in his unwavering attitude and spirit of self-sacrifice which saw him make that ultimate sacrifice. And I think it's fitting that the men and women of Oakley Nahir, whether they serve at home, underpinning our sovereignty, or upholding our sovereign rights, on the island or in the jurisdiction, which is three times the size of Germany, or whether it's the, the soldiers, the sailors, and the air crew, who today serve in 15 missions in 16 countries on one sea, trying to facilitate a safe and secure environment, all abiding by those same principles, the principles that Michael Collins institutionalized in Oakley Nahirin. Physical and moral courage, respect, integrity, loyalty, but most of all selflessness, because those men and women today serving on your behalf are prepared to make that ultimate sacrifice, that sacrifice to give their own life, as many have done and just as Michael Collins did 93 years ago on this day. It's a privilege to stand here with you in the shadow of such a joint. Gurmina Mahavut. Distinguished guests, Ladies and gentlemen, 
I would now like to invite Mrs. Mary Claire O'Malley to say some words on behalf of the family, General Michael Collins. Michael Beery, officers and soldiers of the 2nd Brigade of Cahal Brewer Barracks, and fellow guests. The ceremony here today commemorates the 93rd anniversary of the death of General Michael Collins, your first Commander in Chief. This open day was prompted in no small measure by Private Noel MacDonald the barber of Cahill Brewer Barracks. It was underpinned by the meticulous research of the military archives. May I take this opportunity to thank most sincerely Captain Claire Mortimer, Commandant Pori Kennedy and Commandant Stephen McKeown. The Collins Powell family have a long association with the military archives. The military archives are the official chroniclers of, our, of the army, but also the guardian and custodian of our past history. My father, Lieutenant General Sean Collins Paul, was 47 years in the Irish army, from 1922 to 1969. So it is fortuitous that as a member of his family, I am permitted to say a few words in support of your open day, to thank you for inviting the Collins Paul siblings to share in these commemorative celebrations. Who was Mike Collins? Mike Collins was my grandmother's, Mary Collins Paul, youngest brother. I will now signpost some milestones in Michael Collins's 31 years, from 1890 to 1922. Michael was born in Woodfield, near Clonakilty, West Cork, on the 16th of October, 1890 the youngest of five sisters and two brothers. He attended the local national schools at Lissabard and Clannacilty. In 1906, at the age of 15 years, he passed the post office boy exam and went to London, where his sister, Hanny, was employed in post office savings bank. Michael worked in the post office in Kensington and later in other financial firms. In April 1910, Michael left the post office and took a job with the stockbrokers Horn and Company in Moorgate. In April 1915, he went to work for Guarantee Trust Company, also in London. A born athlete, he joined the GAA and soon after arriving in London, joining the Geraldines Club where he played hurling and at 17 years was a uh, vice captain. About 1910 he was elected secretary of the club which he was to hold for the rest of his time in London. While in London, he met, met many Irishmen who were to bear him company on the road he waited to tread. Dermot O'Hegarty, Frank Thornton, Joe O'Reilly, Sam McGuire. 
It was Sam Maguire who arranged his membership of the Irish Republican Brotherhood at Barnesbury Hall in November 1909. On the 15th of January 1916, Michael left London for Dublin. The rest is history. Michael was shot in the late evening on the 22nd of August 1922. Ambushed at Bailablow, West Cork, less than 10 miles where he was born 31 years earlier. I will wrap up now with a quote from uh, a letter of, written by George Bernard Shaw to Hanny Collins on the death of her brother Michael on the 26th of, of August 1922. This letter and other uh, memorabilia have been handed over to the archives for their safekeeping. They will be the sole custodians thereafter or hereafter. Priorsfield, Galdamming, Surrey, England, August 1922. My dear Miss Collins, don't let them make you miserable about it. How could a born soldier die better than at the victorious end of a good fight, falling to the shot of another Irishman, a damned fool, but at the same, an Irishman who thought he was fighting for Ireland. A Roman to a Roman. I met Michael for the first and last time on Saturday last, and I'm very glad I did. I rejoice in his memory and will not be so disloyal to uh, snivel over his valiant debt. <laughs> so tear up your mourning and hang out your brightest colours in his honour. And let us all praise God that he had not to die in a snuffy bed of a trumpery cough, weakened by age and saddened by the disappointments that would have attended his work had he lived. Sincerely, G. Bernard Shaw. Garmagot. I now call on our garrison chaplain, Reverend Father Dave Tindall, to lead us in prayer. Please stand. All military guests are requested to remove your headdress. In an matter, I'm going to spirit wave. Amen. God, our Father, we come here today to honour the anniversary of General Michael Collins, who paid the ultimate sacrifice in the cause of peace. We continue to entrust him and his family to your love and mercy. We also praise and thank you for the opportunities you have brought our way in the service of peace. May we serve you with loyalty integrity, honour and courage. May peace always reign in our hearts so that we may share that peace with everyone we meet. Eternal rest granted unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. And may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed 
to the mercy of God, rest in peace. August to Gartina at Tobalaha and Sean Yu, make Sonus Schleunter August Seal Connigwin. May the God of peace be with us, taking away our fears and doubts, and may the mantle of his peace cover those of us who are troubled or anxious, and may the blessing of peace be upon us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In that matter, I was in vain, I was in spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, the memorial ceremony will now begin. Please remain standing. Military guests, please recover headdress. Ladies and gentlemen, there will now follow a wreath laying ceremony in memory of General Michael Collins on this, the 93rd anniversary of his death. The wreath laying will be followed by a minute of silence which will be concluded by a drum beat. The last post will then be sounded, followed by the raising of the national flag to full mast. The valley will then be sounded, after which our own Levine will be played. Please remain standing throughout. Rear Admiral Mark Mellett, Deputy Chief of Staff, and Mr. Michael Collins Powell, Grand Nephew of General Michael Collins, will now lay wreaths on behalf of Oakley Naharan and the family of General Collins.
Ladies and gentlemen, I invite you all to remain standing as the Deputy Chief of Staff and the Collins family are escorted off parade. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our ceremony for today. On behalf of the General Officer Commanding 2 Brigade, I thank you for your participation in today's commemoration. You are now invited to view the archival display in the dining complex where lunch and refreshments are available for purchase. Due to the limit, limited capacity in the dining complex, we humbly beg your patience while refreshments are being served. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day here in Cahill Pro Barracks.
Sorry. Go ahead. 